What's up guys? Welcome to our first video and this particular first video is going to be looking at the topic of limits. And so this is going to introduce us uh, to a whole bunch of information about limits and limits are very important in calculus as they form the basis for literally everything. If you are going to understand calculus at all, you must understand how limits work. Now I know I may have intimidated you by putting such high stakes on learning how limits work, but don't worry about it. It'll actually end up being pretty easy in the end with a few complicated twists. But in this video, it's all pretty basic. So I'm just oh, going... Let's start that again. Okay. Don't say intimidate you. Say, I know this might seem intimidating. Okay. It's I... less, less harsh. Oh, okay. So I don't want... To say intimidate you. Okay. I just would leave that out <laughs> in general. You should be scared! <laughs> all right. Or you can say that. I mean, no. <laughs> Don't say that. Poor souls are probably issue. All right, moment silence. What's up, guys? Welcome to our first video. This video being the introductory video to limits, and so uh, limits are actually pretty high stakes. If you want to understand how calculus work, you have how calculus works. You have to understand how fucking uh, goddamn flubs. How calculus work. All right, let's try this one more time. Otherwise, let's just do this tomorrow. Okay. What's up guys? Welcome to our first video. This video is going to be the introduction to the topic of limits. Now limits are very important to calculus as they are pretty much the basis to everything in calculus. If you want to understand how calculus works, you must understand how limits works. So I know that uh, I may have put high stakes on this and it may seem intimidating now, but don't worry about it. Limits are actually pretty basic uh, with a few twists in mind. But, on the whole, they're actually pretty easy. So, we're just going to go ahead and hop right in to the notation of a limit. So, I'm just going to write the notation of a limit and explain to you what it actually means. So, uh, here is uh, the notation of a limit. The limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l. Now, what exactly does this mean? So, basically, what this is saying is that as your x values get closer and closer to c, both from the negative side and the positive side, it's saying that your f of x values are getting closer and closer to l. So this is an important thing to note, is that your x values are merely getting super, super, super close to c, and your f of x values are getting super, super, super close to l. But keep in mind, that x, it doesn't matter what x is at c, it just matters what the values around c are approaching, as those values around c will be approaching, as those f of x values will be approaching l. So, we're just going to jump right in with an example. So, we've got f of x is equal to quantity x squared minus 1. Hold on, start over. Okay. You flipped it. You said, um... It matters what values x approaches as f of x approaches l. I thought I fixed that. No, well, kind of. I would just do that part again, because we're not that far in. All right. All right. What happened to... <laughs> we got to do it. Let's try okay. it. Let's do it. Moment of silence? Yeah, of course. What's up, guys? Welcome to our first video. So this video is going to be our introductory video to the topic of limits. Now, limits are very important because limits make up almost everything in calculus. Everything in calculus, as a matter of fact. And if you want to understand how calculus works, you have to understand how limits works. And I know that I've already put uh, pretty high stakes on learning limits, and it might seem intimidating, but don't worry about it. Limits are actually pretty simple. There are a few twists in there, but for this first video, we're just going to be informally going over what a limit is and how to solve for it uh, informally. And uh, we'll just go from there, and it'll be pretty easy. So, the notation of a limit. So you read this notation as, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l. Now what does this, um, what does this notation mean? This notation means as x gets closer and closer and closer to c, super infinitely close to c, then this statement is saying that your f of x values 
are getting super infinitely close to L. So again, to review, we're getting closer and closer and closer to C, but we're not, but we're never actually at C. We're just getting super close. Then the statement is saying that your f of x values are getting closer and closer and closer and closer to L. So an example of this, we're going to set our f of x to be equal to quantity x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. And as some of you may notice, we can sort of simplify this down through factoring. So we split the top up into the quantity x plus 1 times quantity x minus 1 over quantity x minus 1. And we can cancel those two out. So f of x is equal to x plus 1. But there's a slight difference here. These two are the same function almost. They share the same f of x values for a lot of x values, almost all of them except for one point, and that is when x is equal to 1. Because when you plug in x equal to 1 over here, you get 0 on the top, which is okay, but then you get 0 on the bottom, which is not okay. So the function, so this f of x is undefined at x equals to 1. However, this one, when you put in 1, is just equal to 2, it's not undefined. But if we want these two to represent the same function, you have to say for this function, for this one here, you have to say that x cannot be equal to 1. So this basically makes sure that these two functions are exactly the same by saying that uh, x cannot be, um, x equals 1 cannot be in the domain of this second function because it is not in the domain of the first function. So, uh, now that we've gone through uh, that little bit, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to say that the limit, we're going to informally figure out the limit as x approaches 1 of the quantity x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. And we want to figure that out. So, uh, basically what's going to happen is my friend is going to draw um, a graph and a table, starting first with the graph. And the graph and the table are the two informal ways to go about um, evaluating a limit. So uh, he's just going to graph our function uh, x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, or the function x plus 1, x cannot be equal to 1. So uh, here we've got a graph of uh, x and y values. And so um, we can start off at x equals 0 and see that you plug in 0 in either one of these functions, you're going to get back an f of x value of 1, which makes sense. And you just sort of travel along the function. And as you're traveling along the function, you notice it's going up. And as, you're getting, as your x values are getting closer to 1, your f of x values are getting closer to 2. And that's true from the other side. You can start over here, and you're following the function down, and you're seeing that your values are getting closer and closer to 2. So that's one way to go about it. The next way is with a table. So this is going to be a table of uh, x and f of x values. And here um, we're just going to see what values uh, f of x approaches as your x values get closer and closer to c. So uh, in this case, our c is 1, um, and we're trying to find what our l value is. So as you can see, as we're getting closer to 1 from this side, 0.9, 0.99. Our f of x values are 1.9 and 1.99. And then from the other side, when uh, x is 1.1, uh, it's, uh, oops, hold on, let's flip this around. So as we approach it from the other side, 1.1 and 1.01, the f of x values, the f of x values are 2.1 and 2.01. So we can see from both directions, the values seem to be approaching 2. So we've sort of informally solved this limit. We've found that the limit as x approaches 1, the quantity x squared minus 1 over quantity x minus 1 is just equal to 2. And we've proved that graphically, in, we've proved it graphically and with a table. And remember, these are informal sort of definitions, they aren't uh, rigorous. But there is sort of a, sh uh, a shortcut to the rigorous way to find out what the limit is. So that was one example of a limit. The next example we're going to take a look at is a function you guys may or may not have seen before. 
So we're going to set f of x to be equal to the absolute value of x over x. And so our goal is to find the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x over x. We want to know what that is. So let's go ahead and graph the function. So um, on the left side of the graph, we're going to see that uh, our f of x values are always going to be negative 1 because absolute value makes it positive on the top but negative on the bottom. So these values are just going to be negative 1. And then on uh, the right side of the graph, we're going to have positive values on both the top and the bottom. So here, the values are just going to be positive 1. And those extend on to infinity into either direction. So we want to find what value, absolute value of x over x approaches as we get closer and closer to 0. So let's do it, um, so let's do it uh, graphically. So if we do it graphically, we can see that we're on, uh, we're just on a line that's negative 1, and we're getting closer and closer uh, to uh, x equals 0 from the left side. And as we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer to x equals 0, the f of x values are, seem to be approaching negative 1, and that makes sense. But when you go at it from the right side, uh, your values are just positive 1, and you're getting closer and closer and closer uh, to x equals 0, and uh, your values are approaching positive 1. So, uh, we can actually introduce a new sort of concept, in that we can actually split up a limit into two parts. And some of you guys may be able to intuitively guess what parts, how we can split that up. So, a few seconds ago, I was just talking about it going from the left and going from the right. And this actually goes into the concept of one-sided limits. So, one-sided limits, so each limit is actually sort of made up of two parts, two components. A left component here, um symbolized by this negative sign, and a right component symbolized by the positive sign. So this is basically saying what the value of absolute value of x over x approaches as you're coming in from the left. And then for this one, it's what's the value of absolute value of x over x uh, is approaching from the right side. So these are one-sided limits, and they're just taking a look at which side you're coming in from. And they always have, and they have their values. So this is negative 1, as we proved here, and then this one is just positive 1. Now here's an important thing to note. This limit, this whole full limit, can only exist if the two one-sided limits are equal. However, if you'll notice, they're not equal. This one's negative 1, this one's positive 1. There is no agreement on what the overall value of the absolute value of x over x, there is no agreement on what value this function is approaching as x is getting closer to zero. There's, on the left side it's approaching a value, and on the right side it's approaching a value, but since they are not equal and there's a conflict between the two, this full limit does not exist. And I want to make a quick warning. Each of these limits do exist. The one-sided limits, they do exist, but the whole limit itself, because these two do not agree, these two existing one-sided limits do not agree. This whole limit does not exist. So we'll take a look at one final example and then uh, wrap this video up. So for this final example, we'll have f of x be equal to sine of 1 over x. And we're going to try to find the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 1 over x. And that's going to be equal to what? So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to graph this function and see if we can't determine it graphically. So when we graph this function, we're going to end up with something like this. And it just ends up being a whole bunch of scribbles in here, and then up, and then down. So, when you can graph this out and you, uh, you can put it on your calculator, and you'll just see that this is just a whole bunch of scribbles in here. And it's hard to tell what value the function is approaching as x is getting closer to zero, because there's just so much stuff in the way. So we'll try this using the table method. And so uh, for the table method, we'll have uh, a table of 
x and f of x values, and we'll have the x values get closer and closer to zero, and we'll see if, uh, what the f of x values are and see if we can't determine the limit that way. So um, we'll put in our uh, x values, 2 over pi, 2 over 3 pi, 2 over 5 pi, 2 over 7 pi, and so on. And so we see that these x values are approaching zero because the denominator is getting bigger. So the x value is getting smaller and it's getting closer to one, closer to zero. However, our f of x values are oscillating. They're oscillating between one and negative one, one and negative one. They're just flipping back and forth constantly. And no matter how cl we can get super, super duper close uh, to x equaling zero, the f of x will still just flip back and forth um, super rapidly in such small changes in x. Uh, and it'll just oscillate between 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. And we can do this um, for literally forever. And so because of these oscillations back and forth, and because the f of x values aren't really, aren't really settling on an overall value, we can say that due to oscillation, this limit does not exist. So that was your first taste of limits. Um, we went over three examples, the first one being uh, a uh, classic example. And then the next two were uh, examples of how a limit cannot exist. And those are important to keep in mind um, as existence will come into play later. And remember, um, you want to keep in mind is that with limits, you're taking a look at how x approaches c. You don't care what um, X, what f of x is at c. You care what f of x approaches as x goes to c. And so uh, that was our first video on limits. Hope to see you guys later.